I'm Safin from LUMC, and I will be presenting our work on unbeamed tension of cues in psychophysical spectral ripple tests from the point of view of model. So first, what are psychophysical tests? These are clinical tests that assess the limits of hearing and hearing with a certain with a CI for certain characteristics of sound, such as spectral resolution. For this, we for instance have the spectral resolution test, the spectral ripple test by one and the spectrally modulated ripple test, the SMRT by Aronoff and Landsberger. Unfortunately, after implementation of these tests, unintentional cues were determined later. Uh, and here we propose a pipeline to establish if any uh, insights in unintentional cues can already be predicted prior to testing in patients. And we would like to do that by using computational models. And Via models, we want to assess the neural activation in response to the stimulus, or for instance, look at what is processed by the speech coding strategy. And we, were, we use the normal hearing model of Bruce, um, well known, and the electric hearing model pipeline that we've developed at our apartment, consisting of various parts in addition to a speech processor. And both of these uh, models take sound as an input and give us spikes per a certain frequency as an output. And the speech processor that we use is a readily available research version of Advanced Bionics dubbed SpecRes, and it's very similar to Fidelity 120, meaning it uses current steering. These are the building blocks of that speech coding strategy, and uh, it gives us an electrodogram as an output. The, the first test, the spectral ripple test by one, consists of stimuli with ripples in their in their frequency domain. And then the listener has to distinguish between the standard ripple and the inverted ripple. And the amount of peaks, so the ripples per octave, is the ripple density. And with increasing ripples, the, uh, the test becomes more uh, difficult as the, dif the distance between the peaks becomes less. However, many have questioned if this test actually captures spectral di discrimination in CI users due to the limitations of the CI. For instance, when and O'Brien showed that the in a theoretical experiment the limitations of the CI and the spectral content and that this results in distortions above two RPO. We've done something similar, but then not a theoretical, but in the actual implementation. Uh, here we have the spectrum of the sound, I've normalized it. And then I've also looked at what is actually uh, conveyed by the speech coding strategy. What is actually, uh, which content is found. And these gray lines indicate the, the edges of the frequency band. The speech coding strategy has 15 bands. And uh, by using the, the frequency content after the envelope extraction, you can see these ripples back in the electric output of the speech coding strategy for the standard as well as the inverted uh, rippled stimuli. So here again, the same figure, but with increasing ripples, uh, for instance, 1.4, we can still see the ripples in the electric domain. Uh, however, at two RPO, we can see that it's just alternating up and down uh, due to the peaks falling closer uh, to the limit of how many bands we have. And at 4 RPO, we can see that multiple peaks fall in one frequency band of the speech coding strategy. And as you can imagine in this electric output, based off this electric output, the listener has, the CI listener has difficulty uh, discriminating between standard and inverted. We also looked at the neural output. Here I've shown, shown something similar. So instead of the electric spectrum, we have the, the neural activation spectrum, so to speak. So on the x-axis, we have the basilar membrane and its assigned uh, frequency allocation. And then I have summed all neural activation, so all spikes across the over the entire stimulus. And then divided by the total number, I also get a normalized feeling. And what we see here is that in normal hearing as well as electric hearing, and these uh, thicker lines indicate a uh, generalized view. I normalize the, the singular responses to get a kind of generalized review, uh, impression of what is the uh, generalized response of the basilar membrane. And what we can see here is that you do in fact see these peaks. 
uh, and with increasing number of uh, ripples per octave, these are still visible in both. As you can imagine, this is still at a different location, so it's discriminable. And here as well, but at 4 RPO, for normal hearing, these are still quite distinct, but at electric hearing, you can imagine that the listener has difficulty with discerning these two neural responses. Uh, then we also have a spectrally modulated ripple test, which consists of pure tone frequency components spaced every 33rd of an octave, so that's the carrier density. And this test has the spectral cues, but also temporal, so the ripples change over time. And this is the spectrogram of the sound. And unfortunately, uh, the use of the 33 carrier density was too low, and as a result, at 16 RPO, suddenly we had spectral aliasing happening. And as a result, uh, for, to overcome this, uh, this, uh, <coughs> this issue, they, imp they increased the, the carrier density. And as you see, you no longer have the spectral alias. So um, we use uh, neurograms to show the neural activation in this test. And as you can see, it's quite similar to the spectrograms. And that's because on the y-axis, we have the um, frequency along the basilar membrane. And due to the topological organization, the spectrogram is quite similar to the neurogram because you have, it's kind of like stacked post-stimulus histograms. And uh, what we can see here is that for normal hearing, uh, 4 RPO is visible at both carrier densities. And at 16 RPO, we can even see the aliasing happening in the neurogram. We also did this for electric hearing. What we see here is that for uh, 1 RPO, these lines, these ripples are clearly visible, but at 3 RPO, suddenly the uh, lines aren't that easy to distinguish anymore, whereas with normal hearing, as you saw in the previous slide, it was still quite visible at 4 RPO. So this limitation of 3 RPO is also seen as our department in our CI users. So in conclusion, the models that we have have portrayed the behavior as we had expected with spectral ripple has in normal hearing as well as electric hearing. And we propose to use it as a tool, as a, a small tool for future assessment, for, for future new psychophysical tests um, prior to testing in patients. And also maybe we can use this to assess future speech coding strategies in silicon. Thank you for your attention.